Um, so I'm Andrew Bartlett. I've um, been working on Samba since 2001. So um, I've been doing this for about 15 years or so, and it's a um, real pleasure to see Samba starting to get to a very interesting scale. That's what I'm really going to be talking about today is going from, hey, it's, it works, to actually, people really want to use this. And that scale is also including uh, my team at Catalyst. I've now got five engineers. I've got um, three permanents, one, one junior and an intern on my team at the moment. Um, and so it's really fun starting to see this thing really ramp up. Um, I have been a sysadmin. Um, I was assistant administrator at Hawker College. That was the high school I went to. And there we ran a Samba 3 domain. And it was there that I, really re that I realized that a Samba 3 NT4 like domain was not going to last. So it, was, um, it still amazes me that a decade after leaving there, there is uh, still people running those and running them well. But uh, we need something much better. And Active Directory is what Windows clients really expect. Um, I really would like questions during the talk. Um, that may mean we don't get to the end. That won't matter. I'd much rather hear what you've got to say and, and queries you've got about what we're doing. Um, Samba is fast. Well, we're at least we're releasing fairly fast. We actually are now doing six-month releases. Um, the days where Samba was taking 15 months to release, um, and therefore our um, support cycle was in the order of 27 and, and you know 32 months, that's all very gone. Um, you know, we, we, we support Sambo releases for 18 months, we throw it to the distros after that and say, um, you're going to have to backport the patches. That does mean that some releases that a lot of people have been using, so Sambo 4.0 um, itself was now four years old, and 4.6 uh, is going to be released in the start of March. So, you know, numbers that a lot of people still see in distributions of Sambo 3.6 and Sambo uh, 4.1, which I was seeing in um, Gen 2, I think. Um, are just out of security support and just totally um, unsupported by the Samba team. Your Samba, your distributor may be providing you with extra support. Um, they employ a lot of team members, so they can kind of do that. Um, but we make it their problem, not the team's problem, just in order to keep the management overhead down. But we're also much faster as an Active Directory domain controller. Um, Samba 4.4 could handle uh, 20, adding 26,000 users to the database um, and add them to four groups, which is really important because groups tends to be one of the things that was slowing us down. Um, Samba 4.5, we were able to get it up to 48,000 users. These are numbers running on my desktop machine with F-Sync turned off. Um, Samba 4.6, we bumped it up again a bit to 55,000, but we started really attacking the last of the big problems and we've got up to 85,000 users with some patches that Douglas Bagnall, my colleague, uh, and uh, the rest of my team have been uh, writing over the last few weeks. So uh, that won't make 4.6, but 4.7 will, uh, will have those, those things in it. Um, we were able to get those 50, first 55,000 users added in the 50 minutes, uh, in 50 minutes rather than needing two hours. So we're making a real difference on the scale that we can get a Samba database to. Because scale's important. Not only do most organizations have two user objects per person, per employee because you have the user and you have the computer trust account for the computer they're sitting da down at doing their work. Um, you also um, have the, the fact that in the Samba 4 Active Directory world, we can't rely on really, really good technologies like OpenLDAP to be behind the scenes and, um, and doing that scale stuff for us. It's just not available uh, to put OpenLDAP behind Samba. I'll talk about that at the end of the talk if there's still, still some time. Um, so we've got our own internal database that matches all the Active Directory semantics, but that means that we're, we're going from the ground up. We're learning the basics of scaling a, an LDAP server that proper other LDAP servers learned a very long time ago. But we also want to remove barriers to uh, Samba's use. We don't want people thinking that Samba is, they're deploying Samba and it's at the very edge of the capability. We've got Samba going into some very interesting places. Um, but it would be really uh, hard to sell saying, well, look, if you grow 10%, then it's not going to work. Do I need to move to the other side? Um, I'm just going to change and switch. Okay. So we started rebuilding Samba for performance. And once we started looking for performance, we very quickly found things to fix. Performance issues, not bugs, are now the biggest area of work from our customers at Catalyst. Customers are deploying Samba at scale and so they're growing and keen to keep 
Samba going. We, we don't have our customers saying, oh, if you don't get this done, we'll, you know, we're going to move across to Windows Active Directory. We're actually um, having customers say, we love having Samba at the centre of our network. Could you please address these issues? So we've got corporate uh, networks that are actually running Samba as the network authentication source for 802.1x authentication. All the staff rely on it to be able to get anything done. It's a reliable and genuine part of what our, um, our customers are doing. Please don't mind the man behind the curtain. So while we're um, in this small hiatus, can we uh, have any, anyone got any questions or, um, yep, one, uh, we got a runner for a mic. You'll need to turn it on, I think. Where was it on? You mentioned that uh, in the first 50 minutes it did the majority of the work. Why was it so slow to do the last bit for the um, database? Well, that, that, that'd be telling for the lovely graphs I've got in just a moment. <laughs> uh, you, you'll, get, you'll get that hint in just, in, in just a moment. Indeed, the, we do have problems that, that go at, at the scale kind of thing. So, um, um, so I will get to that because that's actually um, one of the things that was really going wrong. Any other questions while we're thinking about some questions? I'm being really dazzled by the light. Oh, up the far back there. Wow. I got a projector at me and the stage lights. It's sending me thoroughly blind, and you really don't want to see me wearing that hat. <laughs> this might be slightly abstract, but uh, with moving to a six month release cycle, I was just wondering if that has hindered the progress at all or benefited the progress, in your view? Um, moving to a six month release cycle has um, avoided the rush. Well, this last one has worked quite well because it really avoided a big rush to put features in because, oh no, it'll be nine months, often 12 months before the next release would be out because if you have a nine month cycle and then um, it freezes three months before, it's sort of, oh, we better get this in and then things don't go in stable. We had a bit of a rocky start to the release that was made for 4.5 where people really were pushing stuff in, my team included. Um, this last release, I didn't see any of that. I mean, a few on our team were trying to really get um, some things in, but they weren't going to make it. And we just went, okay. You know, it was a little disheartening, but it didn't... Um, that shorter, shorter cycle, it's still too long. I don't like the idea that these performance things are going to be out in September. That feels a very long time away, but it has, a it has removed a little bit of that pressure to just, let's shove that in. It's almost ready. You know, oh, shall we get it in past the first release candidate? We've, that, it's been so glad, so good to be past that. And also, that old mode, the releases weren't ever being made because stuff was being piled in even when they were release candidates. And so things never got out the door. So it is helping. Um, I'd, I'd sort of like to get to four, um, but it's a lot of pressure on the release manager. Um, and I don't really like to add that pressure if, um, unless we can find some other things that we can trim from, from a workload. Okay, so um, one of our bigger per, uh, performance bottlenecks was actually replication. Um, so, I mean, you know, adding 10,000 users, so what does it matter if, you know, it takes a little while. You can't hire them, you can't get them through. But the thing is that it's actually adding a new domain controller. Um, and one of the things that we, the feedback we've got from system administrators is they really want to be able to add a domain controller and go home at the end of the day. Having it take eight hours to, for everything to settle down is really nerve wracking because they don't know whether they have to remove it again. They want to just do it, it's done, okay. Move on to the next task that they're doing. Um, because we've got companies that are literally opening offices and they're going to have to put in the infrastructure. They, you know, there's lots of other things to do. Um, and you've got to get the auto to an X um, authentication up and going and not moving off site. So um, in 4.5, we addressed um, major issues with the client side of replication. We, had, we found, identified four N squared loops. Uh, they were N squared across um, N for each user, which made N squared for the whole operation. Um, we were able to remove those from the code base. These were under a transaction lock. So that meant that um, no other writes could occur to the database at the same time. Um, and if any other process had got to a write, it would just block. So even if it was otherwise thinking of doing reads later, um, our process model would just cause it all to be stuck on FC into a lock. 
So um, we also turned on graph replication. So uh, rather than if you've got three domain controllers, each domain controller try to do many to many replication with each other instance, uh, we instead they would form little loops as per what Microsoft does in, with their Active Directory. Well, ten minutes. This is going to go fast. Uh, <laughs> um, so we could tr that would trigger repl a replication storm. 4.6, um, we've issued an, had an issue with over-replication of links, um, and we've addressed that. The, um, and we've got, um, we were able just to do some silly stuff with, um, we were looking at parsing a GUID, and we're using scanf to do it. When we changed that to just um, a byte-by-byte -byte parsing of GUIDs um, that was much stricter, um, and just you know, expected a particular string form of hexadecimal bytes, we were able to save um, about 20% um, of, of that time, just because fscanf is actually not intended as a performance tool, a uh, performance sensitive tool. Um, malloc uh, was also um, being called way too often. So just some simple stuff like that in, in, uh, was able to make a massive difference, and that's how you saw that extra improvement for the, for the 4.6. Yeah? Yep. So how did you identify some of those things? Were you doing code coverage analysis? Were you using you know, you ah. introspection tools? Or you I also have that addressed in just a couple of slides. <laughs> Any other questions while we're at it? OK, so let's get to these. The, 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 everyone's so keen to find out. So this is what it looked like on 4.4. There's even a bend. If you look very carefully, there's even an upward bend in that graph. So that's, that, that's looking you know, worse than n squared kind of uh, behaviors. This was us getting to these 25,000 users. Um, so this isn't going to end well. You can see if you got to 50,000 users, it's going to get to being over a second per adding user. It's not not good. Um, don't ignore the delete in that. I'm not deleting users during this particular test. And this is what we got to with 4.5 and 4.7. So if, um, that, that's what will 4.7 will have when it's finally released. So um, as you can see, the lines are now much straighter. We don't have that extra inflection. And we have the, um, and it's just much lower. So um, they're roughly the same scale as the previous graph because it was just going at so much higher. So this is how I got the 90, uh, 85,000 users into the database and adding to them to the links. And you've also noticed that we've changed. If you notice where that blue line is, so that blue line of the modified was actually where we're adding the user to four groups. It's now less than the time spent adding the uh, adding the user. Um, so we've made that significantly faster. Um, we've also done other work supporting more users on each uh, domain controller. Um, so we've um, re realized that one of the restrictions where we're only running one process for handling NTLM authentication with the net logon, um, that we can make that multi-process. We've done that for 4.6. And 4.7, I'm going to make the LAP server multi-process. Um, it's fairly easy to turn on in the code, but the issue is that currently, um, if we did a fork and clean up exit in the same way that our file server does uh, for each connection, that um, we think that too many apps will make very short-lived LDAP connections, like a web app that goes, connects, tries to verify some user groups, and then drops the connection again. So um, we don't really want to, to go for that pattern if we can avoid it. Andrew. Yep. Yeah, so the question was about uh, why we were um, the fork, why, why, why do the fork and, 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 and exit, why not do something else? Um, Indeed, that's, uh, that the proposal for the fix that I've got for the client was to use a pre-fork model where we would have, have um, I wouldn't do threads, threads and Samba don't go well together, but I would do, do eight processes or something and have them uh, handle the connections. And I just need to get that code to work. I, um, uh, I've, we took one, one stab at it and, it's, and I need to have another go at it um, because that's how I will address the exit costs. Um, so. Um, We've, you know, find the bottleneck. The, it, there was a number of group members that was the slowest part of the code. The main cost was each group member a link and a backlink. And I was, um, it was kind of funny to chat with um, some of the folks involved in the 389 project and find that saying, yeah, group member, link, backlink, that's also where we're being killed. Um, because the, um, it's just parsing to find the, the, if you go and try and add or delete a user, you've got to check whether they're there. You've got to parse all of these DNs to see if it's there. Um, and so that was our bottleneck. And the way we found it was flame graphs. So um, Brendan Gregg's flame graphs have been an amazing tool for us to use. I'm told he's actually at the conference here. Um, so um, what we've been, if you've got a performance issue in Samba, 
What we'll ask you to do is to install Linux Perf Tools, clone his GitHub repository, read his web page, and then send us back the SVG file that you get. Because it doesn't send us sensitive user data because it's only sending function calls, function names. And, but it's, um, I've had people try and do perf information with me before, and all, it's, all I've got is useless information because I can't tell what's calling what. Um, where the, the, the flame graphs are interactive. Now, this one isn't because it's just a screenshot, um, but what you can see is that the, um, where we're spending our time in, um, for example, LDB value equal exact, this one's an address sanitizer, so it's even worse. But that particular call, um, we didn't need it all. Um, but, and so I could see, okay, wow, 20% of our time just disappears. And these other calls, like this skill would compare, I was able just to eliminate that by just simply making some assertions that we don't need to go and check this list whether, it was a linked list of all the objects that we'd replicated and checking whether it was there already. I said, actually, let's just apply the task now and forget about keeping a list to wait for the end. So um, that's how we did the, so that was your question, how do, we, uh, how do we find it? This is basically what I was using to find it. Um, now, flame graphs are interactive um, when used in a web browser rather than in Impress. Um, I blogged about that for Catalyst. Um, and we've got, um, so there's a nice blog there with interactive, um, the interactive flame graphs in the web page. I might show you that at the end if, um, if I get any time. But this is what I think, it's a bit of a mess, but uh, we did a pilot performance test mostly focusing on linked attributes because that's what we we're being paid to fix. Um, so that line at the top, um, we're all bunches back up to one. We basically found that all the way uh, further into history, it was just milling around at um, all the tests we've normalized their times to one and then seen how they fall out. Um, basically, there'd been no performance improvement in Samba for ages, and that's not surprising. We hadn't even tried. Um, and then, basically, once we started looking at it, so you can see that, that the dates, uh, as soon as we got to about March, we, uh, we, uh, May, we um, started dropping some things. And then once we got to July, uh, we put in our first things in, uh, addressing the issues of the linked attribute performance. And these things just fell out. Um, it was amazing to see that here we have a 70% imp uh, improvement in the performance of some of these things. Um, and then you watch it for this last lot of patches, and the next slide will show it even better. It's dropping down to being less than, um, more than 80% performance improvement for deleting users that have got links on them. Uh, so this, you know, you can see for each test, these are the, po the times where we were able to get those code, that code into Samba. And so, you know, uh, we're not going to be able to repeat this, I, I suspect. Well, maybe there'll be some other area of the code. But finding low-hanging fruit like that was just really, really satisfying. Um, so the difference assorted uh, list makes. Our code uh, needed to find group membership members to support add, delete, and modify, like I just mentioned. That was what they looked like. That's what it was trying to parse. It's just a string, but um, we were getting a hotspot, if you remember some of the previous graphs. Um, one of the ones was around DN, parse DNX, um, get parse DNs and DN explode. Just parsing this string uh, into the format required for uh, Samba to manipulate it was enough when put inside an N squared loop to be 20% of our time. So now we sort by GUID, because that's um, Samba's very oriented around every object having a, a, a unique identifier. And we do a binary search, and that's where we, you know, the time just evaporates. Pending changes for sorted links. So this is the changes that my team has done before Christmas, uh, uh, just before and after Christmas. And um, that was that final inflection that we saw in the graph. Um, and so again, we are having, from the previous point, a drop of 60% on the performance. Uh, so um, yeah, we're pretty, um, pretty chuffed with how that's, um, how that's working out. Um, you know, some of those lines are going up. Our tests are pretty noisy. Uh, but we also think there may have been some small um, costs in some of the other tests. But we think that this is going to make a real difference to using Samba at, at scale. Um, so where are we going with performance? Um, well, we're going to remove the other N, uh, order N and order N squared operations. They're, most of them have, you know, horror, this is N squared, so they're not too hard to find. Um, we're going to uh, work out that for multi-valued attribute handling, move to some kind of a merge sort or something for checking whether uh, there are duplicates in a list and whether the list matches the list that's already there. Um, 
We're going to move to better index handling. We'll probably change our index code that's currently based around distinguished names in LDAP to being based around the GUIDs because everything in Samba has a GUID, so why not use that? They're packed into 16, uh, 16 bytes, so you know, that makes it a, a lot more efficient to sort of work through lists. Um, so um, we're going to have a look at that. Uh, we're also going to look at, uh, we think we're actually getting to the, the limit of what TDB can do for us. Um, so mem copy and mem move that LDB was um, causing, the, it's, was inheriting from its TDB layer and was doing for some of its own purposes with 20% of the time that we were spending. So we think that if we move to another database, LMDB looks really interesting. Um, although I also, um, you know, we're going to look at that seriously. So um, we'll see how that, how that goes, but that also could allow us to scale to much larger database sizes if that's needed, because um, four gig databases uh, will start to be stretched once you get to 100,000 users. Um, so we want to maybe use the uh, Lightning Memory Map database from SIMAS. Um, so the, SIMAS is the company behind OpenLDAP, and um, that database is built by Howard for, uh, for use in OpenLDAP. Um, there's a prototype of that that's already been done, and it appears to be three times faster than, than um, uh, our TDB-based backend for some operations. Um, so I had Garming uh, work, and, and Garming was really keen to start to, to say, "Oh, all very chomping a bit about this over Christmas." So I said, "Look, okay, Summer, why don't you go and spend some time on this?" And he has he's gone and rewritten the backend in a way that actually could be submitted to Samba without massive duplication of code. And, um, and so that also takes some of the benefits of the other performance work we've already done. And as of Friday, it was actually running provision. So uh, we're really excited by that. Now, if we're going to um, get this performance, we need to figure out how to maintain it. So uh, we need to get the large scale operation that we're doing into our continuous integration system. So we're going to need to actually establish the minimum benchmarks for Samba's performance. Um, for it to pass an auto build so that we know if someone does something disastrous. But more importantly, we need to keep running that graph that you saw before. Um, we've, got a, we've got a project uh, from, uh, that we're doing for a client to actually create a performance tool for Samba that's not just the things that we measured here, but other things that happen in the real world more often, like people logging on to a Samba system. And so when I get client approval from that, I'm going to have myself and some other developers come up with a run an Active Directory set of operations like you would actually get from real clients, not just the administrative stuff, because the changing links shouldn't be happening every day for most companies, um, but also um, just you know, all the logons, all of the um, domain joins and other boring things are likely to happen. And if we keep on graphing that and keep an eye on that, we should keep Samba scaling well and try and spot the regressions before they're too old to go back to the developer, introduce them and say, what were you trying to do? What can we do better here? So here's where I need some help from people like you. Um, if I'm going to build this performance metric tool, I need to calibrate it. So um, what we're hoping is that we've got volunteers who are running Active Directory, either Samba or Windows, to tell us what their busy hour looks like in the form of a script around running uh, T-Shark from the Wireshark project. So um, we haven't built this tool yet, but with what I'm thinking to do is to basically create a tool that produces a text output that you can easily see um, is not showing nothing confidential about your network because it will just be you know, log on packet, log on packet, Kerberos packet, that kind of thing. But it will give us an idea about just how many a you know, 100 user site generates when you're running these you know, just desktops or what does it look like when the terminal server logs on or things like that. We'll also try and set up these environments ourselves, but um, you know, we don't know what we don't know. So um, if, you know, please give me an email if you think you can help with that. Um, I realise that you know, sniffing corporate networks is a you know, sensitive business, but if I, I think we can come up with something that uh, people will be able to say, yeah, there's nothing sensitive being exposed, but we get an idea what Samba scale really should be. Beyond performance, uh, we've got, uh, we're also working on uh, Interforest Trusts, uh, because uh, sometimes sharding data really is... Uh, isn't, you know, is, sometimes it's better to shard your data into departments and things. Um, but the initial support in Samba 4.3 hasn't progressed particularly much since then, but we expect we'll have some, um, do some more work in that area sometime soon. Um, and inter-domain inter trusts will come eventually. Um, they'll be particularly useful when people are migrating domains that are um, 
been set up as lots of domains, one per small department within, within a company, for example. Um, but most companies seem to be moving, to, and organisations seem to be moving to one domain, one forest, which is the sample limitation. Um, that's the advice we're getting from the people who are doing large, um, large corporate and, and government migrations. Um, the other area that um, I was sort of interested in feedback from folks here is um, beyond just pure Active Directory. We all know what would make Samba compelling for your networks. Um, how can we integrate better with POSIX systems? Um, so it's really interesting to, you know, one of the things that I'd like to be able to do is to make Samba the natural directory for a Linux-centric environment, yeah, perhaps in the way that my, my friends here would try and pitch free IPA to a, a cluster of Red Hat clients and say, now why shouldn't Samba be in the middle of that? You know, I, uh, what would it be, what would it need to do to be, actually there's just one directory and it serves Linux clients and it serves uh, POSIX clients just really well. Um, so if you've got thoughts on that um, and, you know, we can perhaps, because Samba does a lot of other things really well of, you know, having Kerberos and those other aspects just built in. We do our password management things, some things I've talked to LCA in the past about. So um, if you've got ideas on what it would be, I'd love to hear from you. Um, Sample 4.5 includes an extension beyond what Windows does in um, Password Sync, uh, where it actually stores a plain text version of the password in the directory, but GPG encrypts it with a key that's, off, that's not because it's asymmetric. It doesn't have to be on every domain controller. I'm going to be extending that for a client to also include the crypted password using the standard crypt so that we can also extract that without having to keep the plain text around. Um, so that's some things that should make password sync a little bit easier. Um, that password, that last crypto option also happens to match what Google wants for Google Apps for your domain, uh, which may be a very interesting uh, thing for people who are trying to integrate with that. So we're trying to break out the mould of, look, Windows did this, therefore we do that, to being, well, look, we've, we've got a directory server that people are running in real networks. What do people want for those real networks? Um, lastly, um, oh, a couple more slides ago. I just thought I'd give an update on where things are at with MIT Kerberos and Samba. Um, you, me, you would know that the Active Directory features in Samba are turned off in the uh, packages that you get from your major distributors of SUSE and Red Hat. They're only in the uh, Debian and Ubuntu packages. Um, so the uh, folks at Red Hat have been working hard to get uh, MIT Kerberos support in the Active Directory domain controller. They, it's a long process. It has been taking um, about five years to, to progress. Uh, because they've had to build some test infrastructure and the subtleties, they both say Kerberos, but there's lots of different subtleties under the tin. Um, it's very important, this work, because Heimdall Upstreams only just started making releases again after a period where it, it just went really quite silent. Um, and we're running a very old copy of Heimdall internally, so um, this is important work, um, but it's not, not yet complete. But I want you to understand that it's something that's still ongoing and that hopefully we'll eventually have um, Sam before in those enterprise distributions. Um, there, is, uh, there was an effort to make a uh, Samba faster by using an open LDAP backend. Um, now that was um, perhaps the original proposal for how we would fix this performance problem. And, um, but sadly, other than the presentations my good colleague Nadia uh, did in 2015, I am not aware of any progress that she's made um, since that time and the, the code hasn't been made public. Um, I'm very hesitant about another lift and shift like we have checked, done with the MIT Kerberos backend um, because a lot of Samba's um, complexity is in the LDAP server and so saying, this, this one says it does LDAP, surely we can just, it's not so easy and um, I like the work we're doing on performance at the moment where we're just dealing with one identified isolated issue at a time because that way we can just make slow gains without breaking things. Um, and we can get incremental progress. This may revive itself. Um, it may turn out to be an excellent way to run Samba. Um, it's been great actually chatting with some of the developers on uh, Red Hat's um, 389 project and who knows what the future will bring for Samba in terms of whether we may decide again to reuse someone else's infrastructure. But for now, I, you know, our internal one is what, what we're going to focus on because it's what we can actually deliver to customers in a reasonable period of time. Um, other than that, I would um, really encourage you to um, join me in becoming an official Conservancy supporter. Um, as you've uh, seen with, uh, with Karen around, Conservancy does some great work. They support Samba and keep us with a legal home. Um, and the, um, the work that they do for GPL enforcement and things and 
supporting the outreach project and things like that. It's really good work. So um, I've um, just done my renewal just in the in the talk just before, and it's time to uh, for hopefully for some others to step up. Um, they're really hoping for um, support from people who really care about software freedom. Um, finally, um, there's a few other things that Catalyst does. Um, if you're a sysadmin and you um, are passionate about working on, on Samba and, um, and other sysadmin kind of tasks in a free software friendly environment, it'd be good to uh, have a chat. If you're a developer who wants to hack Samba, it'd be great to have a chat because it's nice knowing who's around um, and, and who's, who's interested in doing things. Um, there's a, Catalyst has been a great place for me to be, to me to find a home. So, um, and I think I've been given the total wrap up. But if there's any last questions, um, happy to take them. Yeah, one question there. Thanks for your time, Andrew. Um, I do apologise if it's something that's changed, but you said, um, you know, what would it take to get Samba into a, a Linux directory environment, make the authority directory server mm. and make it more useful there? Um, I'm under the impression, at least at the moment, that schema updates into those sorts of, like into Samba to say, I wish to add additional LDAP schema is not something that's currently supported or at least easily supported in Samba at the moment. Is but that's definitely, at least it's an, something that comes up that's, okay, I add this to open LDAP because I want additional mm, functionality mm. out the of it. Sch schema updates are really important. Schema updates are supported in Samba. Uh, we do have them off by default because um, there is some, um, they're one of the more fragile elements because of the way that the, um, the schema code is. Um, and we, uh, I asked about removing the off by default recently and I was told I needed to add a few more just constraint checks to check that the scheme that's coming in is, is valid. Um, but um, once you turn that option, once you just mention that option on the command line when you're adding the schema, you can add any other valid schema. I just rec it's, it's there just to put a small handbrake on you so that you go and test it once in a test directory and you make sure you've got things working before you put it in your production. Um, but it is actually a, a supported part. We do, have, we do have tests for changing the schema. Um, but yeah, it's just if it's malformed, um, there's a couple of things that can still go wrong. Uh, so we just encourage it done in a test directory first. That's the only reason for that magic switch. But you just do a DSDB colon schema update allowed and, you can, and you're allowed to bypass that. Um, it doesn't help, there's no docs for that. <laughs> yeah. Anyone else? What's been your experience with code quality in these performance fixes? Has it uh, clarity as well, especially better, worse, net neutral? Um, I mean, the performance fixes have to pass the, the usual uh, rigors of Samba, Samba improvements. Everything has to be reviewed by a second developer, um, and we generally found that. Um, I mean, you're right that sometimes code that's better for performance is worse for clarity. But I haven't been particularly concerned with the performance fixes so far, mostly because of. Um, so last load changes going in are a bit more subtle, you know, getting binary list insertion and things right, but I'm not too worried and we, uh, with that so far. There are a couple other questions up around? One there. And I think I'm probably going to be kicked off the stage in a moment. Yeah, one last question. One last question. Um, is any of the work with the performance improvements using clustered Samba, where you have more than one node? Uh, so clustered Samba is already in many ways supported for Active Directory because you just add domain controllers. So it's already just a naturally supported a part of how we work. Um, what has improved is we've um, improved the replication. Uh, by improving the replication, you make it easier to do more nodes because um, you don't have a penalty on the other domain controllers for having more uh, replicas because they'll only talk to two or three peers, so they, um, they don't notice that there are quite so many uh, domain controllers. So it does work better that way as well. Okay. And we're going to keep working on some of that stuff. Okay, well that was my last question. Thank you.